In my video today, I thought I would share with you just some of the ways that you can use cover plate dies. Uh, Neat and Tangled, of course, come out with these awesome designs um, nearly every month uh, that make great cover plate dies. And this is my collection here. I store all of mine in these, um, they're just pocket pages. Uh, these are, what is it, six by eight and they've got two pockets in it, so they fit the two cover plate dies perfectly in them. Um, and that just makes it easy for me uh, to flip through them and see what I've got. Uh, now that inspires me just flipping through, but I wanted to then start to put together a bit of a list of different ways that you can use these um, rather than perhaps just the obvious. Now I say, um, you know, my list, I've come up with seven different things, but I'm sure there are so many, many, many other ways that you could use them as well. And I would love to hear your ideas. So make sure you pop them in the comments. Um, but let's start off with what I've got. So the first way um, I think to use them is uh, as a background texture and what I mean by that is these were two of my recent cards um, that you may have seen me share and all I've done is use um, one of the cover plate dies on both of these occasions it was this one the inlaid squares no wrong it was the um, squares and chevrons um, for both of these and I've cut it out of the background um, either just plain white cardstock or even just patterned paper and then piece them all back together again to create um, like a plain background but it has this sort of subtle texture to it. So let me quickly show you how to achieve that look. So this is number one is to create a background texture. Um, I am going to use, uh, we'll use the squares and chevrons like I've done in those two cards. This is double sided adhesive. Um, which I have bought in just like whole sheets and it's sort of great for um, a technique like this. So I'm going to take my die and cut it out just like you ordinarily would, just out of plain white cardstock on this occasion. And run it through my big shop. Um, now again, you know, there are going to be plenty of ways that you could uh, achieve this same technique and again this is just the way that I do it so this is also just plain white cardstock that I'm using here I have cut out my double-sided adhesive sheets to um, I would say the exact same size as my cover plate die but it's actually just marginally smaller just so that I'm <laughs> just trying to lift the edge off um, I'll show you what I mean. Now I'm just going to stick one side down to um, my cardstock and peel this one off as well. And lifting off my die. I find it easiest to, with a die like this, to take out um, the biggest piece first. And you know, I said I cut the adhesive just marginally smaller. It's so that when I do this step, I don't have the adhesive um, sticking out the edges, but I do have it going all the way to the edge. And now all I'm going to do is just take all of the bits and pop them back in where they go. So there you go, that is number one, it's about creating uh, a background. Um, number two is what I call um, a patterned paper quilting kind of technique. I'll show you some examples of what I mean by that. It's this very similar idea, you're cutting out um, different versions of patterned paper, but if you cut it out in different colors, then you can piece the pieces back together uh, in different ways, different color combinations, so that you've got this sort of fun, uh, colorful background, uh, and it feels a bit like quilting. So that's why I call it my um, paper quilting, pattern paper quilting technique. I wanted to show you that idea really quick with another die. Um, this fun one here is called Succulents. And again, I uh, have cut out already pre-prepared 
um, some double-sided adhesive because this is a, quite a similar technique as well. Um, and often I just cut up my adhesive in batches like this and have them stuck in my folder so that I'm ready to go for a project um, when I feel like it. So I have gone ahead already and cut out one version of this succulent dye and I've cut it out in white just like I did for this other one. Um, so this becomes my background piece. Just tapping that down. Um, and then this is uh, sort of this inlaid part here. There we go. And then um, to fill in all of the leaves, uh, I thought about doing it in a couple of different colors and ultimately I uh, thought I would just do one um, color just to show you real quick how this is gonna work out. Uh, I've chosen a lovely green that I think is uh, the same sort of color as a succulent might be. But I've seen certainly lots of the girls on the blog um, do a similar technique uh, using um, different colored pattern papers to fill it in. Or of course the other idea is that you can just do a white one and then like color the pieces in. Let me move this out of the way. Now, so you don't lose any of the bits, um, you, uh, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I like to use um, my uh, roller to get all the pieces out or if that doesn't work because um, you know on this one particularly there, there's not a lot of holes um, then you can also use like a poking tool but basically <laughs> um, what I'm then going to do is make sure that I take out um, all of these pieces one by one and stick them back in but I thought I would just get a little bit more fancy and ink up some of the edges um, so that it looks hopefully like a succulent at the end. Now I'm going to do this in um, quite a tedious manner because all of these pieces are quite different shapes um, and I think it would be quite the puzzle if I just sort of tipped them all out um, and then tried to put them all back in again. I'm just going to take the pieces as they are coming out and match them up straight away. And just because I really want to show you how this is going to look as it all comes together, I'm going to keep on doing this process, but um, I will fast forward uh, through this so that you can get to see the end result. Um, so that is um, number two, the pattern paper quilting technique. And the good thing about this is, you know, because I have gone ahead and cut this out in the green as well, is that if I wanted to now do the inverse, uh, I have already started. So you can mix and match your papers that way. So moving on to the next one. And sorry, again, so clearly I would cut this out and make a card from that. Um, number three is uh, what I call making your own pattern paper because so far what we've done is cut it out and then reform it back together the way that it's supposed to go or the way that it's designed to go. But when I say um, cut your own or make your own pattern paper, what I mean by that is, here's an example. I have cut out um, the inlaid squares um, die, which looks like this one. Um, and then I've taken the black um, squares out 
and then arranged them to create my own little pattern paper here on this card. Uh, so it's not like it doesn't quite line up here. I've um, moved it closer together and created my own pattern. Um, but you can take it one step further than that and um, like not only just create a pattern paper but to create uh, a feature embellishment. So this is number four, uh, create a feature embellishment and just moving like Moving on, I still had some little pieces left over from cutting this out. So I have been playing around with this idea of using these extra bits, none of these are stuck down, um, using these extra bits as like a scattering um, embellishment across this card. Uh, I had one big one left, so I think I'm gonna be sticking my little bunny um, in there. Uh, so I've just been playing around with different arrangements of these leftover bits. Uh, but uh, that's what I mean by creating a feature embellishment. So totally now going completely left field from the way the design pattern is supposed to go and just doing your own thing. So that is number four, create a feature embellishment from the um, pieces of your cover plates. Uh, number five is, now this is a fun one. Um, did you know that you can use your dies, uh, instead of cutting, uh, you can use them as an embossing plate. So remember the old embossing plates and of course you can still get them um, and they create a texture in your paper rather than cutting through the paper. Well, you can do that with your ordinary dies. You just need to get um, an adapter uh, by that. I mean, um, you can buy um, rubber sheets or silicon sheets, uh, which you then use in your sandwich. So let me show you what I mean. Um, to use your dies as an embossing um, tool instead of a cutting tool. So let's choose one we haven't used yet. Uh, this is a great technique to use on, um, on a cover plate die that's got lots of little intricate pieces that you wouldn't necessarily want to piece back together again. Um, so this one is called Scalloped and I am going to pop that down, um, cover it with my um, paper. You need to use a, like a thick paper for this or a thick cardstock. Um, watercolor paper works well. This that I'm using here um, is a letterpress paper but just lining that up finding where I've put my other <laughs> plate and we're just going to run it through the machine like we would as though we were cutting it but what you're going to see is that it actually instead of cutting through um, the rubber or the silicon stops it from cutting and instead oh sorry my paper was very dirty I didn't notice um, it's got this impression on it instead. So again, I'm just going to cut that piece out. Um, here's another one that I did with another cover plate. This one's called the Exploding Blocks cover plate. Uh, and I'm going to use this as a background texture for a card. I can easily cover this um, yucky bit up there at the bottom. So that is technique number five is use it as an embossing plate instead of a cutting die. Um, number six is that you can use your pieces of your cover plate um, as a window to create a shaker card um, or uh, so you, what let me just explain you can use something like this so clearly I've already punched out all of the um, little bits and pieces this is the geometric circles cover plate die and then you can put something behind here uh, to create like a window effect. So you can either just put it over a, a patterned paper, so say something like this, so you can see the pattern come through. Um, you can put it over if you did like a lovely ink blended background or you've done like some um, ink smooshing or some kind of um, acrylic paint, that sort of thing pop it over so that the colors show through but you've got this um, awesome texture over the top or use it as a shaker card um, a window instead. So here's one that I have used. This is the warm winter scene die and it cuts out these trees and um, these houses and then I've gone ahead and made it into a shaker card uh, instead. So that's really quite fun. 
So that was number six, use it as a window for a shaker card or for a colorful background. And then lastly, number seven is that you can uh, create your own stencils. A lot of these cover plates that Neat and Tangled create do have matching stencils as well. Um, one of them here, so the exploding blocks, I've got the stencil in the back of this one as well, but there are stencils that have a very uh, same similar pattern as um, these cover plates. But say you didn't pick up the stencil, uh, you can create your own stencils um, with the cover plates as well. Let me show you how to do that. Very simple. Um, I have already gone ahead and uh, done one with my Falling Circles cover plate. I've used this before on one of my Christmas cards that I created. So I've gone ahead and cut it out. I've popped out all of the circles and then literally uh, you can use this to um, as a stencil. <laughs> That's what it is. So let me show you how quick and simple that is. Of course you can buy a proper stencil paper to um, cut out your stencils with. Uh, but I do find that this cardstock works just as fine and so isn't that fun and then you can uh, just move it slightly and go again with a different color and I think this is going to create sort of um, it, this reminds me of like confetti falling so you know something like this would work well for a birthday card or a celebration type of card. So clearly I've just rushed through that, but I wanted to show you uh, how you can use your cover plates to create your own stencils just with cardstock or with the proper stencil paper or with anything you would like. So those were my seven ways. Um, I, as I said, I can't wait to hear what other ways you ha have been using your cover plates for. Please leave a comment and we will try to collate as many ideas as we possibly can. Um, but hopefully I've inspired you today with a few different ideas of how you can use um, the cover plate dies that you already have, or maybe I've even inspired you to pick up a couple and add them to your collection. Thanks guys for bearing with me through this long video, but um, yeah, I really hope that you can get some fresh ideas from this. Have a creative day and I'll see you again later.